In the last question, we dealt with the amount of magnetic field caused by a straight wire. Now, a straight wire is a little pesky because the wire, say, goes like this, and then the magnetic field kind of goes in swirly circle around that current. And it's not easy to use because as it goes further away, so here it's got a strong magnetic field, as it gets further away, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's kind of like the point charge of magnetic fields. And it's hard to use. Much more often, we prefer to have uniform field, right? That's why when you dealt with electric field, we have a lot of parallel plates. In magnetic field, the equivalent is these solenoid thing, these coils as it goes around. Whenever you have a coil like that, the magnetic field inside the coil would be fairly uniform. And here we can use the right hand rule to decide the direction. As a quick review, let's do that quickly. We pick one piece of wire, the current goes up. If you grab that inside underneath the wire, you should get that the magnetic field would go that way and so invariably you must loop around and come back this way but inside you know that the magnetic field goes like that and the construction of the coil makes sure everything is uniform inside and outside it is pretty much non-existent but now that we have the uniform magnetic field we can also work out the size of the magnetic field and the formula here is given as such. This is the magnetic field inside a coil or solenoid, just fancy word here, a coil wire, a coil current. As you imagine, of course, the current, the bigger it is, the stronger the magnetic field is. This constant we've seen before, this here is your linear loop density, which is given by the number of loops per a given length. Some people call this N and L, not a big worry. But basically the more loops you have in a short amount of length, they all add up the field and you get a stronger field. What's not present is the area doesn't matter. It's independent of the area. You can have big loops, you can have small loops. It's all going to give you the same field. So you don't have to worry about radius or cross-sectional area or anything like that. It doesn't come up. So then the last thing is just to sub in all these numbers. We got the length, we got the loops, and we've got the current, so we have everything. So first, we can say n is equal to, there's 40 loops per 0.3 meters, which we can just plug into the next equation. And of course, this is just the magnitude times four pi times 10 minus seven TM over A times 40 loops. Loops is not really a unit, just counting loops and then multiply by the current. Calculator work. We get 2.5 times 10 to the minus four Tesla. Just to show off this last equation that we'll really be dealing with for this very special situation. So it should be pretty easy to recognize.